Welcome to Old Guys Still Rock. Super grateful you gave us a look or a listen. We specifically developed this podcast for friends, or or soon to be friends, who are in the 40 plus category. This podcast is a platform to not only have your voices be heard, but also for others who are going through the same thing and know that they too aren't alone. Our topics may be business, topics may be entrepreneurship, our topics may be social, or our topics may be just everyday life. Whatever it is, we hope that you give it a share and leave us a comment. But most of all, if you want your voice to be heard, please leave us a comment on how to get a hold of you so you too can be an old guy that still rocks and help build our community. Until we speak again, stay safe, but most of all, God bless. All right, all right, all right, all right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. This is your first time here. You have reached one of the best podcasts, at least in our minds, in the world. Old guys still rock. I am Blair Armstrong of Team Armstrong Cowell Banker. Uh, I am a global luxury specialist in the world of residential real estate, uh, located out here in the Coachella Valley. Um, and then on my right uh, is a good friend, for, good friend of mine for almost 30 years, Brett Wright of Brett Wright Incorporated, a man, uh, as some of you may know, of many hats from wellness centers to body shops to uh, property management uh, to personal coaching. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, it's something that just hasn't happened overnight. Uh, it definitely has been a course of uh, for all the time that I've known him and the time before that as well. So what's up, my dude? How are you? What's going Good. on in the world of um, Eugene, Oregon? Let's see. Let's see. I think I'm on. It's I'm again, I'm tired of the. I'm to the tired point, uh, 25 days. So I'm one third of the way through 75 hard. That's good. And, uh, drinking, drinking my water, all my things. And, uh, yeah, it's been really good. So my son, like I told you last time or last couple of times has been getting up with me and going on my morning rock and, uh, he hasn't missed a day in 27 days because we did two practice days before okay so he's seven years old he's going to be eight on the 26th and he's doing 75 hard harder than most adults yeah and he's gonna be eight dude so that's awesome like proud dad moment super stoked uh feeling really uh humbled by his actions I wish I had the tenacity at 28 that he has at eight. Right. And I think that's so great. And I hope that uh, if for Stella, if you ever watch this, you know, that you got <laughs> made it started into a younger generation than you could have possibly imagine. So I hope that you are taking pictures. I am be tagging uh, for Stella in those or 75 hard to get that community out there. It's such a great one to do. And, um, we have a soon to be guest, Betsy Meyer, that we've mentioned multiple times on here. She's three more days out. Oh wow. I, t- I talked to her, I talked to her uh, just just a couple minutes ago. Hmm. And um I go, How you do I go three more days? Like, how's your mindset? You know, because at the end it's it gets tough. You're like, Oh, I've got to grind out a couple more things. But and she goes, I'm scared. And I'm like, What are you scared about? She oh, goes, wow. I'm scared of day seventy six. She goes, I don't want to go back to where I was. And I'm like, she goes, so don't. I'm a, yeah, right. But she, she got a good mindset. So she's got to, she has to go through some procedures mm-hmm. uh, that's going to help her out physically. And um, she's going to take a couple of days to kind of digest everything and then get right back into phase one. And mm-hmm. that's going to end right before she has to go in and have uh, these medical procedures done. So just to kind of keep her in the moment. And she goes, yeah. so, you know, I, you and I've been through this a couple of times and, and I told her it's the hardest part is it's not, I go food and stuff that you have eaten before will not taste the same or mm-hmm. will give you a different effect. And then there will be things that people do that you used to do that will just annoy the ish out of you. <laughs> to this so, level. Oh my <laughs> gosh, man. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? 
And then, the craziest no. part has been uh, speaking of things not tasting the same and not craving things. Um, I love BNF kombucha. They're great local kombucha yeah. um, place. Uh, they got a nice little place over off Prairie Road. We get their kegs, we get their bottles, we sell them at the wellness center, uh, we sell them at the body shop and the detail shop. A lot of our customers really, really like it. Good clean good quality local sourced stuff okay um and i i just absolutely love it however things are tasting different as you said <laughs> things are feeling different i'm not craving it mm -hmm. and on top of it the amount of sugar that's in it uh it's natural sugar it's honey right right you know so natural local tea source tea leaves all that stuff um and uh local sourced honey and so but it's super sweet and so when i taste it now it's like oh wow this is really really super rich and mm -hmm. super sweet and super bubbly and uh, just everything is like it's alive and now i'm not craving it and my wife's like look we have two kegerators one at the house one here <laughs> they're full we have like 300 bottles of this stuff like what are we gonna do like you were the one who was drinking a lot of it you know yeah. you were sell, selling it giving it away to customers promoting it stuff like that but right i was i was drinking probably i don't know a, a third or a quarter of it and so now we have these she's like we got to get rid of these kegerators we got to move this stuff on yeah. like, nah just just huh. things will change taste yeah. buds will change just relax things mm -hmm. you know we'll get there yeah, I can't. I'm, I'm glad it's. I've I've tried kombucha before, but it's just it's way over the top for me. I'm just not a, just not a fan of it. I know that there's health benefits to it. Yeah, uh, but it's the sweetness is just over the top, and I love sugar. Like mm -hmm. you put a cake in front of me, what? Just get out of the way. <laughs> just, just fat boy on a cake. Oh my right? god, man! I'm that kid on. I'm, I'm I'm that kid on Matilda. If you've ever seen that movie, eats a chocolate cake. No, <laughs> you haven't seen Matilda. No. Uh -uh. Oh, you got to watch. It's a good show. You actually should watch it. Have, uh, well, watch it first to see if it's okay with your kids. But I think yeah. it's good for kids. Christian okay. and I used to watch it a uh, ton of times. But it's just, it's it's funny. But this kid eats this whole chocolate <laughs> cake. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. Nice. <laughs> but anyway, so how's the wellness center? Things are going well? Yeah. Yeah. So things are going well. Um, you... You know, when you first start a business, so we're we're literally like eight months into this. Um, and when you first start a business, there's a lot of cost, a lot of process, a lot of things, marketing, websites, you know, get hooked up with the state, get hooked up with the feds, the bank, you know, all the stuff. And so now that the process of, of building it is over, which is the part that I really enjoy, I really right. enjoy the building. The process is kind of starting to, you know, tick down. We just got our new AC in, AC unit in a couple of weeks ago. That's okay. huge. We're able to bring the temperature down to like 65 degrees in the gym part, which is awesome. <laughs> and so when you're in there, it's like, you, you know, you're sweating and right. you're working. You, I feel like you're the more comfortable that you are when you're in an uncomfortable situation. Right. So you can work out longer. You can work out harder. Um, I, I, I tend to be able to, as I'm chillier, if that's a word, mm -hmm. to be able to push harder and farther and lift more weights instead of, and heavier weight, because I'm, I'm not so distracted by the stress of being 75, 80 degrees right yeah. inside the building. Yeah. And so that's been huge. Um, I really, I don't know. I miss the process, dude. I miss the building. And so yeah. my wife is in the, my wife's in the process of building the clientele and building the, mm. the, all the, all the processes, the internal processes for employees and interns and clients and things like that. So that's pretty interesting to watch her go through that. We've never actually been in business together. Yeah. That's a journey. And so it's a very interesting, it's, mm -hmm. it's been very rewarding. Uh, her mom said one time that I just picked the bit, the wrong business partner 
when we were having a talk and she kind of alluded that I, I should have picked April and she's right. I would tell you that, that if I had done that earlier, I'd probably be further along. It's it two, two pretty big epiphanies in the last couple of weeks, uh, on our relationship level. And it, that has been one of them. It's been huge. Yeah. It will teach you a lot, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's just saying that Chrissy and I were in business together for a little bit. Um, as I said, we came, there was a lot that was put on us at the end. It didn't work out the way that we wanted to. Actually, I just, I think it worked out the way that we wanted it to because you now Chrissy's got two boutiques, uh, one yeah. for kids, one for her women's. And it's, she's exceeded all of her expectations. She's about four years ahead of where she wants to be. Uh, the the thing that we learned is, you know, sometimes that you can be a, and I'm still learning this. You could still be a business partner, but not be in the business, right? Yeah. To where you guys are working on it together, and I think that's great. And uh, sometimes it's hard. Um, I've let you know my my biggest hurdle, which I I constantly work on, is letting go of the reins and just kind of letting things happen. Mm -hmm. um, I've had so much control issues. <laughs> with the way that I was raised up um, and we were working through that mentally um, that it's very hard to let someone else run the process. And I'm glad that you guys have figured that out because that's not easy for a lot of couples. Mm -hmm. So um, I would encourage you, which you are a wise man and, and April super smart as well is just write those things down on what's working. What's not working. That's one thing that, now, what I heard you talking about all this that I didn't do, hmm. um, but, you know, is well, especially with our faith, right? We are supposed to be that beacon of light for other couples um, to how to succeed through adversity. Yeah. And, uh, you know, businesses, <laughs> if you could succeed in business together, that's a big deal. Uh, and you see it, you see it fail often. And that's mm -hmm. why I said is the ones that win. Uh, you see, you hear and see about it fail often, but you don't hear about the successes. And it's real easy to put, pick up failures on that part, but we need to hear more successes of what you do. So maybe all of this to put on top of your plate, which the, if anybody can do it, you can uh, start start that book, brother. Yeah. Or we just do a seminar. We just do an old guy rock episode of what worked and what didn't work. <laughs> Now I'll add that that's going to be the fourth book in the series. There you so. go. There you go. So yeah, anyways, I, and, and I wanted to kind of, you know, you and I talked about this and as I normally do in these episodes is catch you off on a thought. So as I just did, that's right all there. right. It's <laughs> all good. It's but, all good. Um, what you just said reminded me of something that we've been, what, what our topic was going to be today. Mm -hmm. Um, is when and you're going to have to help me with the words on this again, but it's really is when you stop standing back and watching and when you become a leader. Yeah. So here, here's the subject uh, that, that I sent you. And this, this kind of came to me through listening to other people's podcasts, listening mm -hmm. to other people talk, some of my coaching clients, things like that. So it it's, it's this in a nutshell, are you being a supporting actor in your life? Or are you being the star of your own show? That's the first part. Okay. Again, I really like these three part series right. kind of yeah. discussions. So the other one is stop asking for permission. And the third one is to be a leader. And they all kind of jive together. So let me tell you where I was going. Unless you have some thoughts first. Go. go. Okay. I'll so, cut you off. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Are you being a supporting actor in your life or are you being the star of the show? <clears throat> so we've all played video games. I'm not good at them. I don't enjoy them. Not a big fan, but we've all played them. So Grand Theft Auto, Mario Brothers, pick something, right? So <clears throat> as you're... I can't remember the name of the, of this one video game, but a friend of mine plays it where you're building like these communities and it's back in like the olden times where you got to go get wood and then you got to take it to the guy that mills the logs. And then you got to go, you, you, you take mud to the brick 
guy and he builds the brick and then you build this community you build your storehouse and you, do you know which one i'm talking about is it like the sims or something like that it's something like that yeah I mean, it's, it's not it's not minecraft but it's no I mean, it's, it's earlier earlier times of that but yeah i know what you're talking about well he plays it on his phone and he's like he's always building something on his phone right but he's not building anything in his life yeah so yeah. Lives in an apartment, drives a basic car, dresses super basic, but on a video game, building this community, building this life, building houses, building stores of food, building all these things. Like this guy, and I'm not, love the guy to death, mm -hmm. not judging the guy. Judging the process, judging the thought, judging the execution, the action or the lack of action. So on this video game, building all these things and building all these points in his life, basic job, basic life, probably couldn't survive a, a two-day ice storm, let alone a, a two-year apocalyptic event, right? Nothing saved, no bank account, no pick something. You could just imagine this person building this virtual life in a video game on your phone, but building nothing in your own life. You can show up on the video game, but you can't show up in your own life. I love that you brought this up, man, because I, there's a couple of things that you said to Tuesday, and we've kind of been skating around this, talking a little bit about it over the last, gosh darn, or episode number 64 today. Um, yeah. But, you know, is I think the more, you know, when we started this, as you guys heard the precursor, sometimes we're going to talk about everyday life or entrepreneurship or business, yeah. which is entrepreneurship and business are two different things in my mind. Um, but, you know, just, but things yeah, like one's this. one's like a crackhead and the other one's. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, entrepreneurship you, is an addictive scenario, yeah. right? You could, so, you could be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And a business, right? That's why I said is And that's good too. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, and, you, and I hear this of what you're saying. And this is another reason why we did this episode. Brett and I, and really listen to this. And especially if you have a friend or a family member that may not get it, Brett and I, especially with the mentors that we had in our in our lives, the John Maxwells, the Ed Milets, the Andy Frisellas, the Tony Robbins, Sean Whalen, the, the Sean Whalens, the Ken McCumbers, the Ken Johnsons, the mm -hmm. Edna's. I mean, the list goes on and on. We are surrounding ourselves with people that, in essence, and if we left you off the list. It's not that you're not a leader. It's just I just named the stuff. Joe Daniels, right? We, we don't we don't have an hour to list all the people that affect us in a positive <laughs> right. way, right? The point I'm trying to make is, I feel, and I think Brett will say the same thing: is society has made us believe that there's only or a couple of leaders. Where every single one of us has been built, literally from the time you were born, to be a leader. And when I hear what you say, because it's becoming more and more common, let's get taught, you know, AI and let's mm -hmm. go ahead and play video games. That's why they put them on virtual there. Virtual reality. Uh, virtual mask. reality. And I can go ahead and build this, this virtual house and live in it. What is your legacy? We've talked about what is your legacy? The thing is like, okay, you built a virtual reality. Is that what they're going to talk to you? I talk about you? Like, hey, he built a uh, uh, Fortnite. He built this. Uh, program on Fortnite. Mm -hmm. but how is that going to affect society? So the point of it is, is that if you have someone that you see them going down this path, it could be at 10 years old, it could be at 50 years old, it could be at 80 years old, it could be someone's retiring is just like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and stay in my silo. And I'm not going to worry about that, especially with the temperature of what society is today is, I'm just going to mind my own business. That's what they want you to do. We are saying what Brent is saying is 
it's time for you to stop being a participant. And I don't know if I'm using the words yeah. right, but but being a get out and be a freaking leader. And if you ruffle some feathers out there, ruffle some feathers, but say your stuff, just don't be so complacent, like, yep. And well, then go off and do something else. Like this guy, his character in his video game, I mean, he showed, showed me all this stuff. His character mm -hmm. in his video game is like ripped. Yeah. He's like buff, right? Yeah. yeah. But but this guy's not. This guy's yeah. like 40 pounds overweight and works out. I, yeah, I work out 20 minutes, a couple times a week, you know, kind of a thing. And while well, I'm playing my video game and I'm being pretty aggressive about, about this process because I want to depict a picture uh -huh. of this person building a virtual life uh -huh. all while not building their personal life. Uh -huh. They're affecting all these people in this video game, but not affecting anybody in real life. Right. Right. And this, I'm guy sure is a, this guy's a freaking uh, amazing genius, highly revered in the video game. Nobody knows who he is in real life. Mm -hmm. Vanilla is vanilla gets. Now, I love vanilla ice cream. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it's sometimes you got to throw a little sprinkles in it, man. Yeah. And I, I just. We, this this word, which I really have learned to like despise a lot lately and everyone wants to talk about this equality BS. I think that we, th there's a certain common thread that yes, that we are equal. We are all human and stuff like that. But if we are not showing our strengths, we're not showing our weaknesses, we are not being a leader and that's not this equality stuff like, Hey, you know, well, this, we're going to rely on this person to get us there. That's, not what we're here for. You, whoever's watching this, uh, Betsy Meyer, or said that Ken Johnson's and Joe Daniels, Edna's, um, you know, it could be Lincoln watching this episode, mm -hmm. one of the two. We listened to it this morning on the Ruck. We listened to last week's. Yeah. So it just, he, he, he wanted to listen to a podcast. I'm like, well, let's listen to mine. <laughs> let's listen. The stuff is, what is your talent? Because this guy that's playing the, the video games has this talent. Mm -hmm. It could be something to do. Maybe he goes and creates a video game. Maybe. Maybe. But be the star of your show. Be exactly. the star of your video game in real life first. Right. I know those things that I'm not good at. I, I know that you and I are good at this, what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. I know that you're good at, at, at doing a, uh, our building businesses. I know that you're good at a body shop. I know that I'm good at, at, at connecting people, mm -hmm. you know, so those are the things that I, and I work on. And then knowing like, okay, how do I become better than that? If someone asked me a question like, gosh, that's got a question last night on real estate. What does this mean? I've never seen that. No one's ever asked me that before. And it's never been an issue. Now I'm going to take today. I'm going to learn about it. Why? So I become a better resource and a better leader in my profession, in my community about knowing that wisdom. Mm -hmm. We just talked about, I, I was with the uh, membership manager and there's some history in our development or our country club of where we were with some Bing Crosby and JFK and all these different places. And I'm running through all of this stuff, the, the history of this stuff. And she's like, I never knew that. Like, how do you not know that? But then she's like, you need to take me on a tour and show me these different things, like these little, these small little nuances that probably are realistically at the end of the day, don't mean ish. But when you're talking to people, they're like, they want to know that stuff. And that mm -hmm. helps us get better. That's what I say is, is instead of being a supporting actor, which you want to, is to be the lead actor, to be the leader and to be that. What is going to make you better? better in that one area than somebody else. And it's okay to be better than somebody else. As much as society wants to tell you that we all have to be the same. Oh, I want to swear. <laughs> I held my, I bit my lip.
we are not the same. We are not all playing on the same level playing field. We are not all invited to the same rooms. And one of, one of the greatest comments that Andy Frisella is in, and it constantly reminds me, you are not invite, you are not in every single room that there are other people are. We're not in the same room as a Jeff Bezos. We are definitely not in the same room as an Andy Frisella or Ed Milet. Could one day, can we get there? Yes. Are we going to have to work our asses off to get there? Absolutely. Do I want to be invited to that room? Yeah. <laughs> right? I but saw this. To, I saw the statistic. Speaking of Jeff Bezos, I saw the statistic. It was something crazy. Like if you're 50 years old and you earn a hundred million dollars a year for the rest of your life and you live to 78, you will still fall short by like hundreds of millions of dollars of where Jeff Bezos is today. Like you could earn a hundred, like at 55, if you live 25 more years, you earn a hundred million dollars a year. You're still not going to hit as much as he has. Not, not crazy. crazy. So let me ask you this question because this has been a big thing. This has been the big talk, you know, or the big meme generated BS on on social media. Which, yes, we use social media to get this show out. But again, as we do a lot of research on here, people put these astronomical numbers that you're talking about the, the Elon Musk, the Jeff Bezos, and the different things like mm -hmm. this. It's like you know these guys need to tax about. No one really sees the checks that that guy's writing to his executives, to his employees, to that's all this other stuff do it is the amount of tax that guy pays and the amount of people that he employs. I'm okay. If I could make a hundred million dollars a year. I saw another statistic while reading about this type of stuff. Okay. Elon Musk's payroll, his payroll, $200 million a month. And we're now, worried it, about how so, much he makes. So let's call it just a standard, let's, let's call it 30% tax bracket, right? Mm -hmm. And if he's having to match, let's go a little bit high, 20% of, of each employee's taxes across the world, right? So 20%, he's having to match of 30%. So 30% of 200 million, and then 20% of that. Just nuts. It's it's in it's in the million. I want to. I remember there's a six million dollar in my head. Um, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, he, um, regardless, that's regardless. The, that's, that's, a, that's a. I think that he what you is said. the star. He is the star of his own life and a lot of other people's. But in the he same is not. Go on, he's sorry. not. He's not accepting about being a supporting actor to anyone, let alone himself. But in the same sense, he's also creating the next. He's creating the next lead actor, right? If they choose to take it, if they is the, choose, is, is the thing, right? And you know, we've talked about this. Our head's greenkeeper, Nick Saban's, um, uh, um, for you guys in, in Gene, uh, the Dan Lannings. Those guys are those guys are the lead actors. They are they they are the leaders. But in the same breath, a good leader is constantly cultivating and creating the next leader. So the Dan Lenning at the University of Oregon came out of, you know, learned from the Kirby Smarts and the Nick Sabins and all these other guys. And, and now he's creating the same thing. Our, our, our head's greenkeeper here. Uh, you know, if he can keep an assistant greenskeeper for three years, um, it's almost a failure to him because he's cultivating these guys to go out and be a head's greenkeeper someplace else. So he's got this rotating door. And that's a true leader. That's a two part of a leadership. So when Brent and I do these um, these podcasts, it's not that we know everything. We feel like we know everything that we're talking about on the on this subject. But we're expecting you, uh, as our viewers, to take this information, adjust your leadership skills to make yourself become better, or maybe take a golden nugget like, "Yeah, that makes sense." and go out and cultivate a leader behind you. So it's always one more. You know, mm -hmm. we talked about the power of one more. What are we, what are, who's the next one are we creating? I, I could look at, at David Schreiner, uh, who is an agent with us for, for Team Armstrong. You know, there's things that I say to him. Sometimes he doesn't like it. Sometimes he loves it. But he always comes back. It's like, I don't know where I would be without you. 
and it's not that his whole life revolves on my, he takes the stuff that I, the good and the bad stuff. Like I've done some stupid stuff and he's adjusted his stuff from that. And I've done some good stuff and he's adjusted from that. I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm using an example. You probably have employees that are the same thing that have been with you for a while. You've cultivated them. Some have taken it to a next level. Some of them have just stayed status quo. Mm hmm so we talk about this consistently in our podcast about this being Therapy Thursdays. When I formulated this question, this question was formulated for myself. Because I have taken a backseat in a lot of ways to my own life, and it's cost me the ability for me to make quicker, more calculated growth. And I just don't want that for anybody else. That's the reason why I bring it up. Yeah. I've sat back and checked out a life. Not completely. Even when most people looked at me from the outside, they're probably like, he's killing it. But on the inside, all I wanted to do was burn it to the ground. Take a day off. Sleep in. Sit in my chair and stare at the TV read a book all day long. None of those things are bad. But when you have consistent mindset that that's what you want to do and you're doing the basic minimums to check the box to get through your life, you know, we only got one ride around here, so around this world. So why why would you just check the box? Why did I check the box? I didn't realize how valuable Every minute and every second was. And I was being a supporting actor in my own life. In the last 15 years, I've really taken the lead in my own life. And it's made a huge difference. And what I can tell you is if you are questioning where you're at today, take a look at it, evaluate it. Heck, get us involved if you want, to, if you want our help. But why are you putting it off? Why are you supporting just the basics in your life instead of gassing out every day? We talked about this last time. Your your workout was freaking phenomenal. You you were gassed. You were done. Oh, done. Like you were dripping freaking wet. Yep. Like why wouldn't you do that in everything in your life? What you did that day, could you imagine if you did that with Every interaction. Oh, yeah. Every sale. Every closing. Every everything. Could you imagine how successful you would be if you did that? Oh, trust. Yeah. 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 And that's why, I mean, I'm glad that we do these things because it does keep you in check and it's very easy to be frustrated. Uh, it's very easy to get complacent. Start riding that that good wave, and not really mm -hmm. think about what could happen. Um, I've learned to. <laughs> we talked about this too. Is uh, it's very hard to celebrate on a win anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because wins. You know. Um, well, what did you used to do? So I. I well, yeah. I mean, they, what I used to do is like, okay, we got it. Let's go out, and I'm going to go go to dinner. We're going to spend four hundred dollars, and we're going to. You know, mm -hmm. get a couple of bottles of vodka and drink and, and do s stupid stuff, dude. And you wake up and you feel like ish the next day, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that was a world of celebrating. Now, I don't think celebrating is bad. I do think it's important, mm -hmm. but I don't like it's not going to happen all the time. Go out there, win that championship or win that, win that playoff, whatever you want to call it. I'm a sports guy, as you can probably figure out. Mm -hmm. um, and and enjoy that moment. Um, but Ed Milet, Ed Milet talks about it. So when you win, your temperature rises. Yep. Like so, let's just look at it like a like a thermometer. So your yep. temperature rises to a hundred degrees when you win, and then as soon as you celebrate, it starts to drop. Yeah. And you drop to seventy two degrees, and that's where you start. 
So next time, be, pay attention to it. Drop to only 80 degrees. Drop to 82. Drop to 85. Start keeping your temperature at that 100 degrees or maintaining at 100 and shoot for 110. So what I've done in the past is win 100 degrees, celebrate, take a day off, hang out, watch TV, watch a movie, blah, 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 check out, go for a Harley ride. There were two or three years that all that's all I did was work five days a week and I rode my Harley two days a, a week, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, just to check out. I deserved it. I worked hard that week. All the things that I tried to sell myself on. One of my coaching sessions last week, talked to this gentleman and I said, or two, three weeks ago, so let's do the math. If you wake up one hour a day early for seven days, you just gave yourself a full day's worth of production. You just added an eighth day to your week. Good thought. Good thought. Again, this is a call out for me. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this is the other thing that I've been guilty of is asking permission. Like I run everything by my mentors. I run everything by my friends. I talk to them about, well, what do you think I should do about this situation? What do you think I should do about that? Instead of just creating action. I, I'm good with that for a certain extent. I think that you, and I know that I, I know that you do this, but I want to, for people that may not understand this is you still need to have that circle to run people past. And you have, and have at least give them different scenarios. Um, small biblical right now is for for what I learned this morning and devotional is is have that same stuff is really not asking permission, but hey, guy, this is where I'm thinking about going. What are your thoughts? And being open to that. So maybe it's for someone who doesn't have faith in there. Maybe it is a group of mentors. Don't try to do this on your own. That is my, I've done that. And I know that you're not doing that. I'm just using this for an example mm -hmm. for, for other people that may think, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to take my own advice and run with it. Get yourself surrounded with people. At least you can bounce some ideas off and make a more educated decision. They may give you some good points about it. They may show you some blind spots about it. Then take action. Definitely, do, definitely do not not take action. If that made it sound right, take action, but make sure that you have some people surrounding you exposing blind spots to you or exposing hurdles that you may not see or didn't think about at that time. And then run like crazy and burn that bridge behind you. But, but you have that information first. So what I've done in the past in regards to that is talk through it mm -hmm. and then not create an action. Or I surrounded myself with yes men. Or mm -hmm. yes, women, mm -hmm. right? Where they're just saying, hey, it's okay. You need to take a day off. Go ahead. You deserve it. Surround yourself with people that are going to push you, that are going to hold you accountable, that are going to drive you to your goals, where you can communicate your goals to them. And they're like, hey, I saw you post that you're going to take a day off and just chill out. But you told me that you weren't. So right now, Kyle Vanderlinden and I are creating a mastermind. Good. A mini arate inside of us, essentially. And we're surrounding ourselves with high-level individuals that are going to help us, that are going to push us, and they're going to hold us accountable to our own stuff. And we're not going to ask permission any longer. We might get feedback. Feedback's different than permission, mm -hmm. right? You were talking about feedback. Permission is, is, hey, what do you think I should do? And then they give you their input. And then you're like, well, maybe I just don't do anything. And then I don't have to worry about any repercussions of my actions. And then I and then that translates into going back to the supporting actor role. 
I'm just going to be here for other people and I'm going to help them, which is good and noble. But when are you going to help yourself? When are you going to stop building in a virtual world and start building in your own world? Yeah. And dude, I love that. Um, there is a part of society that I'm seeing. I'm sure everyone can attest to this as even you is we are relying on a couple people to make our lives better. Mm -hmm. That scares me yeah. a lot. Um, especially where the fever pitches is at right now. Uh, you and I talk about this a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, there may be some leadership in that, but you better take the reins of your life and surround yourself around some people because there is a ton, a ton of empty promises and you will become the useful idiot if you rely on that of what is being thrown out there and thinking that something is going to Someone Andy, is going to Andy come and Frisella, save you. Yeah, Andy Frisella says it all the time. Nobody's coming to save you. Yeah, yeah. And I just, Brett and I are not coming to save you. Brett and I want to create a leadership in you so you can come back and tell us like, hey, we went through this. You guys should do this or look at this stuff. And it's like, we're not here. We're not the white horse by any means. We are not the smartest humans on this stuff. Like, We're smart. We've tasted life. As we said last week, We've won a lot and we've lost horribly, mm -hmm. but we're the ones that are sitting there and that we didn't ask for permission to come and do this podcast, but no one else is telling you, get your ish together and everyone needs to hear it. No one has completely won. No one. Not Ed Milet, not Andy Frisella. Those guys would tell you the same things. Not Tony Robbins. These gurus in there, they're giving you life experiences and that's the purpose behind this this podcast is why we want you on here. You have something that we need and that someone else needs to hear. Mm -hmm. We have the technology. I thought it felt like that was a, the start of Steve Austin. You built technology <laughs> to get you fat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just dated we, yourself. You're officially an old guy. That's still dude, I'm, sweating. I'm old. <laughs> um, you know, I, we, I, I purposely wore this shirt today. You know, this is my brother, Kelly Armstrong, taking, taking something that he's not supposed to be a part of uh, in a community that he's not supposed to be a part of. But he's, he's taking, he's stopped being a supporting actor. He's saying someone else is going to do it. Someone else is going to do it. Someone else is going to do it. Well, yep. I'm done with waiting for someone else to do it. I'm going to do it. Are people going to like me? Some will. Some might, might, might hate me, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to make my mark. And mm -hmm. if I win, awesome. If I don't win, I did something. Yeah. So, and I think that's a great thing. So I'm going to give this obviously platform back to you, but thank you for bringing up that topic today, Brian. I mean, it's just like, you know, mm -hmm. so we, we all can get, it's very easy to become a lead actor. I'm like, yeah, this movie, I'm just going to go ahead and be the supporting actor because I don't have to read as many lines. Taking the easy path right. never got anybody anywhere. I'm going to do a cameo this round because I built a name and I, and I have, I have the right just to do a cameo for 20 seconds and then disappear. You don't know how many times I see people post. I just want the easy button today. <laughs> Why? Why would you just want the easy button? There's no valor. There's no success in the easy button. And I'm not. Yeah, I guess I am calling you out. I'm calling myself out. That's it's easy for me to call you out because I'm calling myself out. Yeah. And, and you know, and society wants you to hit that easy button mm -hmm. because if you keep hitting that easy button, someone's going to overtake you. Yeah. And I do. This is. Just, I'm still at 55 years old. I'm learning like, yeah, I want to hit the easy button all the time. I'm very excited to go to Hawaii in 20 days, but I know what Chrissy and I are going to be at, at, at four o'clock Hawaii time. We're going to be up working. So at seven o'clock Hawaii time, we can go enjoy the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. But that's what's, you know, when you kind of see these things, I want to hit the easy button and AI and chat GPT, 
They are dumbing us down. Yeah. And that's what they want, the easy button, so we can become the useful idiots. And this one may be a little bit harsh for some of you guys to watch, but it is a call to action because as much as Brent and I want to help you, Brent and I need your help. So I've said it a hundred times. I didn't really wake up until I was 35. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be like all conspiracy theory or anything, but the, the movie, the matrix kind of plays along with, I woke up. I literally woke up at 35 and I was like, I'm done being the supporting actor. I'm, I'm going to be the star of my show. Well, I'm still waking up. So I'm glad you woke up at 35. It's been oh. a sl it's been a long wake up process, buddy. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that, mm -hmm. you know, at, at 42, when I had my first kid, um, Emma, that that woke me up even more. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the fog was starting to lift from 35 on to 42. And then at 42, like I could see a little peek over the fog. And then it just keeps getting more and more clear every day. If you feel like you're in the fog. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to get out of the fog. Reach out to us. Yeah. I would love to chat with people who are in the fog or feel like they can't get clarity every day. They don't know what to do. Reach out, get on the show. Even if you're not wanting to be on the show, if you've had trepidations about being on the show, just because you're like, ah, I'm just not that person. I don't like to have, you know, I don't like to be the face person. Be the face person. No. Be the lead actor. And for and for those of you that are camera shy, just literally looked down and, and thought about this. We do have the technology, as long as we know you're going to do it, to call in and we can patch you in so no one has to see your face and you can talk to us. So we'll make it really easy for you. We want you to be on the show. We know that you have some hidden talent that everybody needs, regardless if you don't think that you don't too. Yep. If you want to be on here, we can patch you on. You could do video and it'd be great and it's fine. And yes, it's a little bit weird. If you feel safer for not having people see your face and want to be hold anonymous and call us on the phone, we can patch you in. It's super simple. Go caller number one. I want <laughs> One of these days, I want to say that on this show. Yeah, just, uh, you know, as I said, that's been a learning process for us over 64 episodes. We've grown a little bit better. and There's other things that we can do and, and get it out there. So um, oh, I, I wrote down today, no ums. I got to <laughs> I got to stop saying um. Yeah, uh, I think I say so a lot, too. Yeah, uh, me and you, oh, uh, ums. And so oh, and so's. Yeah. 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 All right, brother, we have. And I know we kind of end abruptly and stuff, but we have given April her 45 minutes. That's right. So <laughs> we have accomplished a goal today in this week. And uh, I'm also going to send this to Betsy Meyer. I hope that you listen to this whole episode. Um, three more days, sister. And uh, you've crossed a finish line that not call many us. people can say that. Yeah, call, us on, call, call, it, call us on day 76. Yeah. Yeah. That's day seventy six is is uh, day seventy six is um, is where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. Don't go get the big fat burger and fries. Don't get the milkshake, Betsy. Mm -hmm. Back off. Back away from the milkshake. <laughs> Just back away. Yep. For you've sure. Made, you've made a change in your life, and there's no reason to revert back. Amen. Amen. All right, brother, any final words for you? As always, go make a damn difference. I'm grateful for you, mm -hmm. our friendship, our cultivated podcast. I'm grateful for the folks that listen. Yeah. Please hit the like button, hit the notify. Please share it. Our shirts are really cool. Our hats are really cool. We'd love to give you one. You said all I need to say, brother. <laughs> all right, guys, until next week. We love you guys. As Brent says, uh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, stay safe. Most of all, God bless guys. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Take care.